Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and can spare even a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today, we're gonna to be going over an awesome addition, new addition to Metasploit, the stagerless interpreter. Okay, so when you say stagerless interpreter, um, that implies that interpreter is by default staged. Correct. What does staged mean? Well, we actually went over this a little bit in um, season one, actually, which doesn't it doesn't seem like a long time ago, but it actually is. <laughs> it has been a little bit. Um, so, staged payloads. What happens is um, an initial connection, the the little piece that gets sent over um, in your exploit or in your binary, um, is very small, and all it's designed to do is make some kind of connection back to you, so that it can get its stager or, or staged um, stage two, basically. Um, so it's like setting up, it's like, you know, you send just enough to kind of clear some area and download the rest of the payload. Right, and it's actually, it's very interesting and very important to remember that your stage and your stager, so the stager is the thing that goes over um, initially, and your, state, your, your actual stage, your second stage, um, are completely separate threads of execution. So you can actually have your stager make a connection back to your multi-handler, uh -huh. and then have your multi-handler set in a stage that's actually pointing somewhere else. Right, so you could have, I mean, if you're working with a team, this yep. makes a lot of sense. If you've got one box that what it's doing is, you know, trying to pop shells and inject, uh, you know, whatever, if it, say it's a remote code execution or something like that, which we showed last week, uh, it could be sending the stager, and then it could be then connecting to the, you know, the, the mothership ready right. to actually get its exploited goodness on. Right, so how I use this in, in quite good effect on, on phishing is I'll have a website on one spot, right? So that website is where they're all connecting to for the exploit. Then I'll have the uh, binary that or the, the jar or whatever I have executing over here. And when they pull that down, that executes. And that's the malware that the reversers are gonna look at. So it's gonna connect to my first box and my first box is going to then send a stage that says, hey, I'm actually listening on IP over here. So their malware, they're gonna see this. That makes so much sense right. too. Because, so then they block this and I don't care. Right, because if it's- I still have shells. Right, because if the, okay, so the stager is like pointing over here, but when it downloads the rest of the payload, that one is pointing somewhere completely different and exactly. that's what's running in memory. Right, and right. they can't see so, that. You know, machine reboots, you do forensic analysis, you're looking at And they get the binary the point place. at one. And they block that IP, but I still have the sessions. Right, and you say that they actually both run in different processes, so that kind of- Not different processes, different threads. Different if, threads. And you can do pre-pen migrate. There you right? go. We that's already a, talked that's about what that. I'm saying, tying it all together. Right. Okay, cool. So a stager list version of Interpreter. Right, so the, the benefits there um, is, the biggest real benefit is the fact that you can um, bundle everything together into a single executable or a single mostly executable because exploits normally won't have enough space. And when I say space, um, the 73 kilobyte file that is generated with Meterpreter in it by default is tiny. Um, the DLLs that are loaded for all of the functionality that goes into Meterpreter, like, so like the key so logger. So like every time you use a payload. You know, every it, time you load an extension. Load an extension, I mean, right. yeah. Then, so then it's got to load those into memory it and it's got to transfer those over. Right. And that turns out to be like seven megs if you, if you start loading a bunch of stuff in there, like incognito, Kiwi, um, Amy Cats, all the functionality that you're loading in there. It's, right. It's and really I mean, big. it makes sense, right? If I'm using, say, like a, a, I don't know, a keystroke injection or something, like really tiny, I want it to be as, as absolutely small as possible, which is right. actually why I like your PowerShell WGET and Execute right. for the USB rubber ducky because it's like plug it in and you want it to take as little time One as line possible. Done. So that's kind of an example of a stager, right. in fact. Right. Uh, in fact, that could probably be then used to download your seven meg. Stagerless right. one, ah, okay. Right, so um, where stagerless comes in, into big play though is something like a satellite shot or, or third world country or something where the bandwidth cannot handle the seven megs that are going over the pipe initially, right? So let's say that um, you have um, a one-time executable that you don't want to have anything seen on the wire mm -hmm. going over. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you have SSL decryption on, on your uh, proxy, and you have all of these things that our uh, IDSs will look through. Well, in 
in Metasploit, if you do a stage payload, um, that SSL is, is automatically um, decryptable because it's a self-signed cert um, that, that doesn't really check. Um, they're actually adding some checks into there, but, which is awesome, but not right now. Um, and you'll see the metserve.dll being thrown across the wire. Well, if you use stager lists, there's nothing being thrown across the wire except for the one connection. Right, so the only thing that's being transferred now, uh, the only activity on the network is just you communicating with your reverse uh -huh. shell All or in whatever TLV. Oh, wow. And so, so then you can set it up with your own, like, can, what, you transfer your own encryption keys to it? Can, you, well, the, can the, you package your payload with your own custom crypto so that it's not like a self-signed thing? You or? can. Yeah? Yeah, you can actually do it. Oh, so okay. what we're going to actually, we're not going to go into that yet. Um, we are going to go into actually building the stagerless payload. Okay. So I, um, I also just realized that this makes so much sense if you're, like, say, going to put it on a disk. Right. Right, because if you're just going to, like, remember when CDs would come in the back of magazines mm -hmm. and stuff? That kind of idea. Right, so um, we already have our, um, our reverse handler from before, from the other segments, and so we're gonna just piggyback on that. So set payload, or not set, use payload, Windows, Meterpreter. Now, if you, if you notice anything different here, um, if you have an updated version of Meterpreter, or updated version of Metasploit, you'll notice that when I hit tab complete, it didn't give me another slash. Why? Oh, because there's more than one interpreter. There's because like now there's an underscore interpreter, and we talked about this in in the payload section, where if there is no extra slash, that means yeah. it's staged, um, non-staged, or singles. Oh, so it begins with an underscore. Or so let's, let's go see. into here, and you'll see that the anything with a slash means that this is the stager, right? And that's the stage, right? So stager staged, and then we go over here, and we see that there's no slash on these underscore 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 underscore. Right, ah. so we put an underscore here, and now we have all of the available stager lists. Hey, you know what, that's Payloads. actually, as far as file naming conventions are concerned, that's kind of brilliant, because mm -hmm. it means that when you hit that tab to autocomplete, then it's just like underscore and hit tab again, and now you've got all of the, you know that you're looking at the uh, stager list, stage -list yeah. version. So yeah. we're gonna use reverse TCP, and the crazy thing about this is that, that since this is still the same reverse TCP um, connection, we can still use the staged uh, handler. Oh, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Because okay. it's because it doesn't care. I mean, because it already it's, knows. It's like, hey, I'm listening from interpreters. I don't really right. care so, if you're staged or so not. So it makes one request um, to make to get the stage down. And it makes a completely different request to make um, once it's staged. So it just skips this part. That's rad. So show options, and these will be the exact same options except for some a couple new ones the extensions. So this is actually where we get to load in whatever extensions we want to um, prep in there. So right. we don't have to do them all, which is great. So if we know that we're not gonna use the Kiwi extension, we don't, don't have load to load it. it, right? So you definitely want the Mimikatz ones. Toss that guy in there. Okay, so set extension, extensions. T instance. So we're gonna type in, you know, we want standard API. Right? Uh, yeah, we kind of want that one. <laughs> um, we want extended API, because that one's awesome. Okay. And we're going to throw Mimikatz in there. Thank you. And, you know, we're good there. Well, yeah. yeah. We don't need any more. We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need to make a giant interpreter. Right. So that's it. It's just comma separated. And we got all of our other options in here. Type generate. T for exe, or type exe. F for file. Temp Bob, Bob dot to, Bob yeah, Bob And you notice the size on this. Hey, hey, look at that. 17 megs. It's pretty big. Or not 17 megs, 1.7 megs? 1.7 1.7. Okay. Hey, that's, that, I mean, that's not too bad. Right. It's still pretty large. Still, yeah. It's, uh, it's not something that you're going to be sending over most, like, posts. So we get into our thing. We upload uh, PWD. So upload... Temp Bob to Bob two. Oops, load it to Bob two. Gonna take a second. This is really fast because it's all local. Right, it's all local. Right, and then we execute H F Bob two dot exe, and it says standing stage, but it doesn't. So that actually doesn't happen. Okay. Um, so we have our interpreter session two. You'll notice that. 
as soon as it sends stage, it was automatically like it's right. Boom, really on. So if you do sessions now and see what you've got, list those guys. We have number three. There we are. Now, if we do three, and we yeah. do a question mark, yeah, you will notice get the ones that you've. No. So this is one one very important thing. So um, even though they are loaded, so you'll notice that priv is loaded. That actually got thrown over the wire because mm -hmm. we didn't select it. Um, but it doesn't show the commands that we've already that we said want, we wanted right. there. Where are my mimicats? Do right? I still so have to? You, you do know, have to add load them? mimicats, but you'll notice that it's fast. Oh, it's, okay. So it's like it's already loading, there. It's local copy. Right, because it's already there. Concept. So does this mean now that if I forgot to add some extensions that I wanted, I can then later add? Of course, those? you can. You, right, you, because it's using the same session. It's using right. the same four 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 that we're expecting. Yep. Whoa. That's yeah. rad. It's really cool. OK, does this, though, for example, mean that um, since it doesn't need to wait for uh, a handler to be listening to send the rest of Meterpreter, because it already has all mm -hmm. of that it, that it wants at that time, at least, does that mean that if you don't have any handler running, that it'll just keep waiting until you do and then so connect sort of. back to so you when you want? Let me show you something very important. Um, if we go back to our use exploit multi handler. We talked about this briefly in one of the segments, but um, show advanced. So there are a couple, oops, I have to set a payload, sorry. Show options, set payload to Windows, interpreter, reverse TCP, show advanced. So, oops, HTTPS. So in the HTTPS payloads, or HTTP payloads, there are two really awesome settings. The session expiration timeout okay. and the session communication timeout. The session expiration timeout says, this interpreter session will die in X number of days. So the, well, minutes actually. So 60,000, 480, 480,000 is like a week, sure. or seconds, sorry. And um, the session communication timeout is 300, which is five minutes. Five minutes. Ouch. Right? So, so you're not listening within five minutes. But your toast. But the problem is with with a staged payload, with a staged payload, it has to communicate back to the handler to get these settings. So <gasps> so we can prepackage these. Right. So if you set these settings in the stagerless one to something much higher, it's going to try and communicate forever. You can put a zero you in could. there. You could, and these, since these are just advanced options, it's just set, uh, set session, session communications commu timeout, nine, 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 no, nine, nine, zero. nine, zero, zero. Oh, perfect. It'll try and communicate Always. forever. So this setting in a stagerless payload yeah. will continue to try and communicate for at least a week, unless you change this expiration timeout to something longer, right. like zero. Right, but if, if something happens to you. So your, your handler it, will keep going. Right, but if, if something ever happens to you, Mobix, and, and your interpreter sessions are always trying to phone back home to you. That could just, it's, it's heartbreaking it, to it'll, think about. It'll, it'll live on. I'll live on through my handler. You will. In <laughs> fact, yes, yes. That is pretty wicked. And I totally see the power now of that. Right? It's, it's so it has kind some, of a big deal. Yeah. And huge thanks to OJ, the guy who actually made this happen inside of Metasploit. Yeah, so many cool things are, are happening with this framework. It's awesome to see this evolve. It's awesome to see this show evolve. Right. Uh, yeah, and so, you know what? We do need to thank our epic sponsor because this show would not be yeah. made possible without you guys. And that is, and it's, I'm, I'm saying this so proud and, and I'm just beaming right now to tell you that the reason that Mubix is sitting right here next to me is because of you guys supporting at metasploitminute.com. That's where you can find the links to all the ways to support, including the Patreon, patreon.com slash Mubix. You join up. You, you know, if you find some value out of this and you can give some value back, so you can be a Mubix E or a Mubix Er. You can be Mubix a Patreon. I. A Mubix, Mubix I. I. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Mubai. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Let us know what that might be. You can uh, leave those in the comments, or you can email uh, yeah. msf at hack5.org. We really value all the great uh, feedback that we get, all yeah. the awesome comments. We read all of it, and it really shapes the show, too, because if there's something that you want to see, we'll put it into a future episode. Definitely, definitely. And like the fact that season five is even happening is such an awesome thing. It's, it's because of the Patreon 
um, supporters, Patreonies. Pa we haven't figured that patrons. out yet. Patrons. Patrons. The patrons. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that I'm here, the fact that I'm doing this is just so awesome to be a part of. Yeah. And you know what? We want you to be here and be a part of this. We want you to be pen testing with Hack5 uh, because that is our new course that we are launching. And we are very excited. June 6th is the date. And this 26th. is... 26th. So, June, sorry, 26th. June 26th is the date. And we're very excited because it means that we are opening our home and letting you guys into the warehouse and we want to be hacking with you. So pen testing with Hack5 is where you can come and get all of the Hack5 uh, arsenal. And we will equip you, but not just with the gear, not just with the Wi-Fi pineapples and the USB rubber duckies and all of that, but with the knowledge to be able to use those in a practical setting. And it's myself and Mubix and Sebastian for days of hands-on training. So yep. we're very excited to be launching this. And because we are launching this and we're super excited, uh, the Metasploit Minute viewers, you guys are getting something extra special. So basically, if you're a supporter, you're going to get lots of warm fuzzies and massive discount right now. Massive discount. Uh, so hack5.org slash training. Hopefully it's not sold out by the time this airs. <sighs> we're going to have to. If it is, we'll keep adding seats but maybe. <laughs> yes maybe yeah, we'll, we'll gotta gonna, go find gonna, some more chairs add some more courses but yeah we'll just yeah, start yeah. putting people on the rafters if you want to hang from rafters at the hack five <laughs> warehouse <laughs> oh so. my gosh uh rob this has been an awesome season i'm very excited about this and now i just want to start crafting uh stagerless interpreters that never die never Never die. Yeah, this is so awesome. And the, the functionality uh, is great. So, and, and that's really it for this episode. So I'm Ubix and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Thank you very much. <laughs>